There has been a trend over the past couple of decades to show horror movie villains with the ability to learn and to grow and sometimes even redeem themselves throughout the course of the film's story. This list ain't about them. I'm Sean Ferrick for What Culture Horror, and here are 10 pure evil horror movie characters with no remorse. Number 10, the psychopath, Angst. If you're a villain in a horror movie and the name you're best known by is simply The Psychopath, then you've well and truly done your job. Kay, commonly known as The Psychopath, is the lead character of the gruesome and gritty Austrian flick Angst. He's a serial killer with a vicious mind and a complete lack of remorse, performing heinous deeds that would make anyone shudder. The movie opens with Kay letting the audience know how excited he is to kill again after his prison release. It then follows his exploits as he relentlessly murders an innocent family and does awful things like drinking a victim's blood, drowning a man with a mental impairment, and even taking the corpses to try and scare his next victims. One fascinating element of the flick is that the killer narrates the events, giving you a look into his mind. This helps you understand how his traumatic childhood shaped his present, adding a semblance of sympathy. However, that sympathy quickly dries up as he lets you into his cruel and angry psyche. Number 9. Adrian Griffin, The Invisible Man Domestically abusive relationships are utterly despicable, and the horror genre has drawn from that, well, many times. However, even among the multitude of horrendous villains that punish, attack, or manipulate their partners, very few match up to the extreme lengths this bad went to. Lee Wanell's The Invisible Man took the iconic titular character in a direction no one was expecting. The film follows the exploits of a woman, Cecilia Cass, escaping from her controlling and abusive partner, Adrian Griffin. However, he took gaslighting and abuse to a whole new level. Griffin was a tech genius who designed a suit that made the wearer invisible. He used this advanced technology to torture his ex by faking his death and then stalking her, with his invisibility making it impossible for her to escape or to convince anyone of what was happening. This antagonist wasn't a vampire, an alien, or anything supernatural, yet he had not even a shred of humanity in him. Griffin's narcissism and sociopathy made him completely merciless, and seeing the lengths he went to just to torture someone he supposedly loved made you wish for his death. Number 8. Lola and Eric, The Loved Ones Buy one get one free with this entry, as this disturbing father-daughter duo are the complete package. That is, if you're looking for sickos with a penchant for torture. The Stone family are a single parent unit consisting of Eric and his loving daughter Lola. All Eric wants is to make his daughter happy and ensure that she enjoys her prom night. Oh, that's adorable, right? Well, it would be if it wasn't a horror movie. You see, Eric and Lola share in an awful hobby of capturing young men, torturing them, and then pouring boiling water into their brains to lobotomize them. They've done this countless times, including to Lola's own mother, proving that she really is a daddy's girl. Watching them delight in frivolities like burning vocal cords or pouring salt onto wounds is enough to make you sick, but if murder is not enough for you, then guess what? These two are also in love with each other. That's right, you can add incest on top of their existing pile of crimes. Lola and Eric are, quite easily, one of cinema's most unwholesome families. Number 7. Rose the Hat, Dr. Sleep The horror genre is full of creatures that feed on others to survive. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, and monsters like vampires, wendigos, or werewolves have to eat too. Still, even they would look at this merciless villain and say, Ah, oh, that's a bit far. Rose the Hat is a vampire-like creature from Stephen King's Dr. Sleep. She leads a ragtag group of fellow vamps known as the True Knot, and they get up to all sorts of fun activities like travel, games, and brutally torturing children. Oh boy. True Knot are a sick group that feed on the shine emitted from psychic youngsters. Rose takes the lead on this as she lures kids in like a spider catching a fly, but she doesn't finish her meals quickly. Rather than capturing a kid and sparing them too much pain, Rose brutally scares and tortures them to make the steam they emit stronger. Watching her complete lack of mercy as she mutilates children is sickening, and as such, she earns an easy spot on this list. Number 6. Captain Vidal, Pan's Labyrinth There are some characters who let you know right off the bat that they're not going to be pleasant. Guillermo del Toro's iconic Pan's Labyrinth puts its main antagonist into that club within his first few minutes of screen time, as Captain Vidal is as unpleasant as sandpaper underwear. This menace's first appearance showed him getting frustrated that his pregnant wife was running a few minutes late, then scolding his stepdaughter for offering him the wrong hand to shake. Okay, so he's impatient, rude and a terrible father. It's not a great start, but the ball had only just started rolling. Vidal took every opportunity to show the audience how cold, despicable and violent he could be. He was a horrible father to the protagonist, an abusive husband and a ruthless military ruler. One particularly gruesome scene sold the latter of those to perfection, that being the infamous sequence where he brutally caved an innocent man's face in with a glass bottle. 
Pan's Labyrinth is a flick full of terrifying mythological creatures, yet somehow this human being outshines most of them as a force of pure evil. Number five, Julia Cotton, the Hellraiser franchise. Hellraiser is a killer franchise featuring one of horror's most depraved villains, the Twisted Hell Priest or Pinhead. However, the second instalment has a sequence where that very monster remembers his human past and sides with protagonist Kirsty Cotton. To put that into perspective, a maniacal interdimensional sadomasochist has spent more time on the side of good than the secondary antagonist of the first two movies, a literal human being, let that sink in. Julia Cotton is a devious villain who ticks many evil boxes. She had a lustful affair with her husband's brother Frank, then spent the first movie bringing victims for Frank to drain so he could regain his human form. She even helped to kill her husband so her lover could wear his skin. Of course, Julia was initially reluctant to perform these deeds, doing so only to achieve her lustful desires. However, she returned in the sequel as a fully malevolent force, murdering innocent people with no remorse and even striking up a position of power within hell. The dastardly Frank Cotton deserves a mention here, but Julia's transition to pure evil certainly outdid that sex-crazed lunatic. Number four, Margaret White, Carrie. Stephen King is, without doubt, a master of horror. He's already secured a spot on this list with the dastardly Rose the Hat, but it's time to bring another of his vile creations into the spotlight. Enter Margaret White. Margaret is the mother of the titular Carrie from King's iconic tale of teenage struggle and blood-drenched psychic massacres. As the parent of the girl responsible for the latter, it's no surprise that she's an absolute monster, acting as one of the main reasons for Carrie's terrible life and her eventual turn as a murderer. This horrendous caregiver is a religious fanatic who shames and abuses her daughter for any perceived slight on God. Naturally, her fanaticism goes beyond prayers and traditional sins, as she sees anything related to the female anatomy as sinful, even chastising Carrie for starting her menstrual cycle. Margaret's mental and physical abuse comes to a dramatic head in the film's climax, as she actively attempts to kill Carrie whilst wearing a creepy smile across her face. The twisted sense of righteousness and her lack of stability make her one terrifying antagonist. Do not give this woman a best mum mug. Number three, Mick Taylor, Wolf Creek. Exploring the Australian outback is a dangerous adventure, as you've got to contend with the harsh heat, deadly creatures and challenging terrain. However, one piece of fuel to the fire is crazed outback killers and the delightfully wicked Wolf Creek showed just how reprehensible they can be. This grisly horror flick follows a group of backpackers as they're hunted down by sadistic killer Mick Taylor. Taylor, as an antagonist, is a force of nature, and he easily charms these characters before drugging them, torturing them, and hunting them down for sport. Mick is completely lacking in empathy, as he hates tourists with a passion. However, his xenophobia is only a guise, as his real motivation simply comes from the thrill of killing. His lack of mercy, or any motive, make him one of cinema's most sadistic killers. Now, there is even some truth to the Mick Taylor character, as he is based on the infamous backpack killer Ivan Milat. While the film's claims of being a true story are tenuous at best, thankfully, there's no denying that Wolf Creek reflects the terrifying darkness of the real world. Number two, Jack, the house that Jack built. The house that Jack built is a deeply disturbing horror from the demented mind of Lars von Trier. It follows the misadventures of a serial killer named Jack as he recounts his decade-plus-long murder spree to the poet Virgil. Jack sets himself apart from other on-screen serial killers as, on top of being a cruel monster, he also has absurd delusions of grandeur. He sees himself as a genius artist, but it's clear throughout the film that he's nothing more than a thoughtless murderer who was lucky not to get caught. He performs reprehensible deeds, murdering men, women and children in an array of barbaric ways, yet he describes himself in overly poetic language as a gifted artisan and ethical hunter, which becomes grating after no time at all. Thankfully, Jack gets what's coming to him at the end, as he literally burns in hell. Number one, Mademoiselle Martyrs. The history of human consciousness has birthed many profound questions, but none do it quite like the big old mystery of what happens after death. Still, very few would go as far as this horror villain to answer that conundrum. Mademoiselle is the main antagonist of Pascal Logier's Martyrs. She is a twisted and cold woman who leads a cult-like organisation hell-bent on uncovering the afterlife. How does she do this exactly? Well, by relentlessly torturing and abusing people, of course. This monster genuinely believed she could turn someone into the perfect martyr by torturing them so intensely they transcend the world and see the other side. Naturally, this led to an unbelievable amount of blood on her hands as she oversaw the systemic capture and mutilation of countless victims. Mademoiselle's methods were beyond barbaric as she robbed people of their lives in order to fix up her own afterlife. While it is entirely understandable to search for the next plane of existence, 
there's no forgiving the relentless punishment this woman inflicted on so many innocent people.